Welcome back. You can see what we're going to do today is le croissant. Or, like we say in English, croissant. Croissant. I don't know how to say it correctly in English. So, anyhow, so we're doing le croissant, which is basically a yeast dough and it's very flaky because of the butter layers. And let's get started. In this video, I'm going to uh, use two batches of the recipe. The reason is, when I'm making croissant, I'm making it for many days or many weeks to come because it's just not very fast to make. So instead of making eight croissants, I'm making 16. So I'm making two batches. So the recipe on the website is for one batch. What I'm doing on the video is for two batches. There is a reason, because it's more convenient. On the day one, I buy all the ingredients, I weigh them, and I put them all in the refrigerator. So I know I have everything. We call that la mise en place. And then on day two, I make the butter block, and I mix the dough, and put it in the refrigerator. So on the day two, I make the butter block, the dough and put them in the refrigerator because we need the dough to rest in the refrigerator to develop that deep flavor so the enzyme can develop and also uh, the gluten will relax. If in the middle of the process you can't continue, take everything in a, and put it in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer. But you don't want to leave it in the freezer more than a week because it's a dough with the yeast. The yeast does not like uh, to be in the freezer for too long. And you can take, a, uh, take the dough out, uh, out of the freezer, put it uh, in the fridge overnight, and continue working. Start by mixing the dry ingredient together. Uh, bread flour, all peppers flour, sugar, then salt, then dry yeast. We mix everything using a large whisk to make sure everything is nicely mixed. The butter is the star of this recipe, so please make sure to buy the best butter you can find in the market. The butter should be at room temperature, very soft. You, uh, in a large bowl, mix the butter and the flour using a, a flat beater and keep mixing until you don't see any dry flour. I make a lot of croissants every month, so I have these custom wooden frames to make my life easier. Uh, it's uh, a square uh, of eight inches on the side. The height is between a quarter and half inch. So here I'm spreading the butter between two plastic sheets, but you don't have to have this frame. This is optional. And uh, so we're trying to get the butter into a square, and then we put it in the refrigerator for a few minutes until the butter is no longer soft. In a large mixing bowl, add dry ingredient, the milk. Using a flat beater, mix the whole thing until we don't see any dry ingredients and we stop. This is just for a few seconds. Then we switch to the dough hook at low speed until the dough is smooth and very soft, about seven minutes. Move the dough in a container with a lid to store it in the refrigerator overnight so the dough will relax and then the flavor will improve. The next day we start the process of the lamination. We get the butter and the dough out of the refrigerator. I already put the dough between two plastic sheets so I don't use too much flour when I'm stretching it. I'm going to use again the wooden frame to help me to have a perfect rectangle. Keep rolling the dough until you get a rectangle which is twice the size of the butter block. 
in this case 8 inch by 16 even up to 22. Place the butter on one end of the dough, fold the dough over the butter, pinch the edges to close the dough, making sure there is no butter is hanging over the edges of the dough. Place the dough in the refrigerator for a few minutes. If you want to continue working on it the next day, you may place it in the fr freezer for a few, mi few minutes, then in the refrigerator until the next day. Get the dough out of the fridge and stretch it into a small rectangle. We're going to divide this dough into two equal portions, one portion goes to the freezer until I'm ready to use it and the other portion I'm going to use it right now we're going to close the edges to make sure we don't see the butter using my wooden frame which is uh, 8 inches by 18. Roll the dough until we get uh, the height of an 8, between 8 and a quarter inch. I'm trying to get a perfect rectangle, that's why I'm using this frame. It's Again, it's optional. Since it is too small, I'm removing it and I'm going to continue rolling the dough until I get an, a rectangle of 8 inches by 22. If you see any spot of the butter, make sure to flour it. Then you fold one third of the dough from one end and you fold the other third until you get a perfect rectangle. Then you store the dough in the refrigerator for a few minutes. And here I'm going to mark it by number one since it's my first fold. Now we move to the second fold. We take the dough from the fridge, we stretch it into a large rectangle, then we fold the dough, then we put it back into the plastic bag, then back to the refrigerator. If you want to have a break and stop working, you can store this dough in the freezer no more than a week, so you can continue the lamination process another day. Now we're doing the third fold the exact same steps. Take the dough out of the fridge, stretch it into a rectangle 8 inches by 22. Using a croissant cutter, cut the dough into 8 croissants. Uh, each one of them is going to be 8 inches by 3.5. Uh, you may use a knife or a pizza cutter to do the same thing. Keep the trims in a plastic bag. Don't need them because we don't want to lose those layers. Take each triangle and stretch it into another slimmer triangle. Right now, the, the height of the, each one of them is around eight inches. We're going uh, to have a triangle right now between nine, maybe even 11. Then we roll the dough from 
the base of the triangle and make sure the tip of the triangle is underneath the croissant. Keep shaping the croissant, then place them on a baking sheet with a liner. I'm using a silicone liner. Then cover them with a plastic bag and let them proof at room temperature between two to three hours. I let mine proof until the volume triples. Make a simple egg wash by combining whole milk with whole egg. Brush the croissant with the egg wash. One of the most important things for croissant making is proofing. It cannot be underproof. The croissant are ready to bake when they are at least double in size. Well proofed croissant will give you the flaky and the layered texture. Brush again the croissant for the second time within an hour up to two hours. 30 minutes before baking, preheat the oven to 425 degrees, 218 Celsius. Brush them again for the last time before baking. Place them in the oven and immediately lower the temperature to 375 Fahrenheit, 190 Celsius and bake them for 10 minutes. Reduce the temperature to 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius and bake them between 12 to 18 minutes until deeply brown, puffy and crisp. Serve them warm or let them cool on the pan. Making a croissant, it's really an art. So it may take some experience, some time, and if it's okay if you don't, uh, if you're not successful the first time you, you're trying it, it, it took me a long time to, to get it to that level. So read the recipe more than once, make, make it again and again, and you're going to be able to create one of the best croissants you've ever eaten in your life.